Afternoon everyone, welcome back to Marion's World. Another instalment on um, stitching the blackbird for the fabric bird book. Um, I haven't actually done any more since I last made a video on it. I've been busy quilting and I don't know. I don't know, I just seem to have been really busy doing all sorts of things, uh, mainly quilting and doing the pages for the other book. So I'm just going to get straight into it and see whether we can, how far we can get on with the bird today. So the first thing I need to do is just make sure that everything is as I want it to be. I'm going to start and put in the tail and also the bird's wing and I've got my picture here to, as a reference as to what I wanted it to be like so I'm just going to start with a little scrap of the black I'm still just laying down the shape of it really um, so I'm going to get a little scrap of this brown black sorry there's actually a watered pattern in there and the lines are going that way so I'm going to leave the pattern of the fabric to help make the shape of the tail and that looks actually about right to me the right length so I'm going to just cut this piece off and I'm going to I don't think I need to pleat it or anything but I'm just going to just going to fold it in half really just just so I can get a nice shape. I think I need to um, just fold that in half. I'll get it about the right thickness. I think that looks about right to me. And I want to cut the end of the tail on a bit of a slant, which is the way I'll leave my picture there so you can see it. I hope you can see it there. Uh, I'm going to cut the tail on the slant. Remember, all of this will get stitched over. I'm just laying in the base of what it is. Actually, that is coming really near to the edge of my finished page. But I do have some space here, so I might just move the whole thing over a bit. Just, I probably should have started the bird a little bit further over. But that's a good thing about stitching the edge of your finished page. It means you know exactly where you're working to. And if you've left enough fabric, you can move things about here and there so actually i am going to don't think i'm going to shift that up there i think i'm going to just i think that might actually go up under the wing so i'm going to put that there and i'm going to stitch it on i've got black thread i've just got a single layer of black thread in my in my needle and just the same as i did before I'm actually just going to hem stitch that on with tiny stitches so that when I come to do the embroidery, nothing's going to be moving around. Just lay that down. Little stitches off. Oops, going around the end of the end of the fabric. There we go. I did it again. again. There we go. Okay. So actually, that's quite. It's quite a good shape. Just in a stitch, right the way down to the bottom. Not too bothered about getting the whole thing stitched around I'm just going to hop over to the other side and stitch back up to the top and I'll just turn that round oops Got my beads for a specific reason hopefully we get onto it well we should do anyway so there again, there's the tail laid, laid into his body. I'll pick it up. And just hem stitch that in. I 
I've still actually got ink tense dyes all over my blooming nails. Even though I scrubbed and scrubbed them. Sometimes it doesn't get out. Okay, I think I'm quite pleased with that. Could you hear the fabric ripping there? It's so fragile, this fabric. But it's going to be fine. Okay, right. It's on. Just going to go down through there and tie that thread off. And the next thing is the wing. I've got a knot ready in my thread. Got my needle pin cushion. I'm going to use the same fabric again for the wing. I don't think that's quite long enough, quite wide enough. I'm going to take a piece of this. Just cut a rectangle out. I try not to actually cut the absolute shapes, but sometimes you need to. I'm just going to measure it off this pattern here, just to see if I've got the right length. I think I have. I want the wings to come down like that. So I think I'm just going to cut that shape in a bit more. I'm going to leave it like that and know where the wings are coming. Just put the light on. It's a bit dark here today. It's a bit rainy again. So I'm going to pleat the fabric. I just want maybe two or three. You don't, I'm not going for total authenticity of the amount of feathers. But I want to have the suggestion of feathers. And so I've actually just pleated that three times. And if I put that down there, I can see that that will make a good start to the wing. And I'm actually just going to use a pin pin that on which will help me hold it while I'm cutting it around so I'm going to I know the wing goes to the bottom of the tail here and this these would be the line the where I've pleated now are the lines that are going to go up like that so that's sort of what I've done So I'm going to cut this like that so that his wing starts to go up the back of the body. They can actually peek out a little bit from his back I think and move them over so the wings are just to say peeking over the back of the tail. Put that pin back in. I'm actually going to start and just stitch that down in just the same way as I did before. And this is, is actually the identical way I made the green man's wrinkles by just pleating the fabric as I went. I'm just going to, I don't want to actually want very many stitches here. So I'm going to make big gaps between them. I really do just want to hold it down, ready for the rest of the stitching. And I think it's going to be difficult for you to see me because it's all in black. But it's a blackbird, of course it's going to be black. That's the bottom of the wing actually stitched down. Take that through to the back. And if I come up and just stitch that top fold in, I'll be able to take the pin out. So I'll stitch the top fold. And obviously now I'm stitching down through all of the layers. So 
like black knitting. Black knitting is hard to knit on. Black wool. Um, I think I've got enough room in my thread to do one more. Through the back. I'm not even tying it off. There's going to be over stitching, so it's okay. <coughs> okay, so there's the wing coming through quite nicely. See if I can hold it up to the camera for you. The folds of the feathers. Um, I'm just going to fold that in. There. I'll maybe fold it in as I go. Oh, maybe I'll just cut it off actually. I think I'll just cut it and have the raw edge. Yep, that's lovely. And so at the top end of the bird here, I want the shaggy feathers coming. So I'm actually going to cut down as if I've got the, the shoulder of the bird. I'll use these bits further on. And then here, I need to just pull that up so I can put a different layer on top. Okay, not bad. Lovely. Like that. Oh now I've got the shape of the wing started. I'm going to put one more layer of fabric on here to make these top pieces and then start with the threads. I'm going to get another piece. Got some stuff like this. It's got a bit of a pleat going. What I'm going to do is take, take the piece, take the hem off it, A bit and I'm actually going to pleat that up oh yes that's going to work like that so if I cut those first into the feather shapes it's a bit too small to cut it afterwards, maybe. Yeah. I think that's that's that looks pretty decent to me. Yep. Right. Oops. I think I just moved the camera there. Okay, I, um, I'm going to get this stitched on a bit and come back to you. It took a bit of fiddling about, but it's all fixed on at the top. This is really straight, so I'm going to snip into it to actually make the feather shapes. So I'm just going to snip into this over bit and make the sort of feather shapes that are just going to... these big top of the wing feathers. Slipping the fabric out and just creating texture all the time. And some of these might get overstitched and some might not. But I've already got good texture going on there. And I think I'm going to be ready to start putting some actual colour on here so that it's not just the flat black of the fabric. Hmm, there, like that. 
So I think the next thing is we're going to get his head done. So I had this bit of yellow felt that I think is the go a good colour and I've cut out his beak shape that I want to stitch on somewhere there like that and I've also cut out a circle for his eye and I'm going to, it might be a bit too small actually, I'm not quite sure yet uh, but the main thing is that I wanted to have a bead for his eye and I've gone and looked. I don't have any black beads that are round. All my old black beads are vintage and they're very angular. So I've got a choice. I've got these white ones, which I can put on and then paint. Um, actually, these might be the best ones. I've got... Um, sometimes I put them on and then take them off and try another one. As you can't always tell when they're not on. I've got these ones which are actually knitting beads, beads for, for knitting in. Which actually, I think that probably is too big. And I've got some in here which look like they might be, they look like they might actually be a good size and they're, they're actually dark green. But again, I can paint them. Oh, that might also be a bit on the big side. So, I think that's too big. These are the ones we'll try. But in the meantime, I shall put some yellow thread in my needle. And get started on the beak. So again, I'm just going to stitch it down and then do some nice lines that'll help to make the bird hopefully come to, come to life in some way. I'm just going to get the point of his beak under that stitch. There we go. Stitch up the line of his beak, I think. Just with a back stitch. I'm caught on his feathers now. Just keep lying it in the right place. Just want a small back stitch to come up there. I want it to look like his head's in, in, in the beak or his beak's on his head rather than just, you know, lying flat. Okay, I think I think that's a decent line. I'm going to just take the ends here and just make some straight stitches onto his head they probably will eventually get joined with some black stitching so that the feathers look like they're coming from around his beak but at the moment yeah looks, looks all right i think there's a bit too much beak but the black black thread will sort that out And with the same yellow, I'm just going to place his eye. I feel as if it's going to come up about there. Just needs to be at the end of his beak, really. I'm going to get my circle and put it on right up through the middle. See if it looks like it's in the right place. I think it does. And then I'm going to try one of the beads. No, which one? Try, try this white ones because I've got a feeling they're the best size. I want to try the biggest one of those. 
I think the other one's too small. If this isn't big enough, I'll try the other bead out of there. So I'm just going to pick that up and go straight back down the yellow and pull it tight so it sort of indents into the padding of his head. So I'll go back down into there and see what that looks like. Oh, now I don't think I've got enough. I haven't got a bit. I haven't put a big enough yellow circle. So I'm going to take that out and cut a slightly bigger yellow circle. I'll definitely use that bead, but I need a bigger. I need a bigger circle. Up the middle. Up the bead. Up the bead, back down the circle, and I'm going to pull it in and see if that looks fine. Oh, the circle looks really big at the moment, but we just wait and see how it goes. I can snip it, whereas I couldn't make it bigger. Much better, much better. So I'm going to keep that definitely. So I'm going to just tie off this. I'll go once more round. I'll go, I'll go once more through the eye, I think. So I'll come up again. Once more through it, just for double, double checks. Safety of not, it not falling off. Pull it really tight so it's pulling down into the padding. And just a couple of back stitches on the back to secure it. Okay, we're getting there. So I'm actually going to snip in with that just the slightest bit. I don't want quite that much yellow around it. But now it's easier to deal with because it's already stitched in. And I'm going to get my black paint. And I'm going to paint the eye and we'll see what it looks like. It's a good size brush into the into the top of it because I don't really need very much and very carefully I'm going to paint that bead. And then I have a nice black eye. And I can put a little dot for a highlight on or something like that. So as long as I'm not I'm careful not to go on the fabric, I can paint the yellow thread and everything. Might need another might need another coat. But actually I think that's working quite well. I might need to snip the yellow back one more time. I'm just going to let that dry and put another coat on before I start the stitching. The black paint on the eye has worked really well. I'm very pleased with it. So I'm just going to start with all the lovely bit of turning this basic bird into something lovely. So I want to put a bit of a dark line underneath his beak just as the just as the um the shadows or just the the shading of his actual beak and just going to straight stitch along it immediately gives it some contour and I'm going to come right onto the head because I want the edge of this beak to really blend in with the head and I'm using two strands now in in the needle I think I'll just do one more line down there just to give it some some depth I'm going to split that stitch because I don't want the stitches to look too separate and I'm stitching on the felt here I 
and if I have one more. And I'm going to split that stitch as well. Just pull out a little bit more. And then fill that bit in there. Oh! Oh my goodness, a very low aeroplane's just gone past. That's not something we normally hear. I think that might be, I think that might be all I need on there, maybe just one more little piece here. I'm not sure that I got the line of the yellow stitching right. So I'm just going to, just going to lie that and see whether it's a better line. Um, I think I'll leave it for the moment. Just put it there. And oh, now I'm going to knock that one off. I've got three shades of grey here. There's no proper grey in my big my big pile because um, I don't normally work with black, I suppose. Uh, so that's to one side. So I've got three good shades out of my box. Quite a dark one and a mid and a pale. Now this pale might actually end up looking white because even though it is a silver grey, because it's going on top of this black, it's going to look very pale. But I'm going to start with that and then I can tone it down with the mid grey if I need to. So I'm going to start and I just want to make it look like there's a highlight touching the bird's head. So I'm going to come up just on his beak and I'm just going to take really small stitches that are in the direction of where I know the feathers are going. Now I can see straight away that that is really light and I think it's even too light for me to be using. And I'm going to do a little practice. And if it is too light, if it doesn't tone down with the other thread, then I'll not use this one and I'll go to the mid colour straight away. So I'm just going to make short stitches. I want them to come as if they're coming away from the eye. The little short feathers. And also, it may be that two threads is just too thick. And I'll just do some towards the back of his eye as well. And it's all about having a reference to look at um, and just thinking, I keep in my mind all the way the way. You know, if it was an animal, I'd be thinking how the fur lay for the bird. I'm thinking all the time how the feathers lie. I don't want to do stitches in the wrong direction because all of that helps to give you the realism that you're looking for in your embroidery. So I think it's not too bad, but it's definitely too light. I'm going to come and do a little bit of longer stitches here because they have sort of a raggy piece underneath their chin. So I'm going to actually go off the fabric, off the black and into the base fabric to just feather out the shape here. Like that. knowing that I'm going to be going over this with the mid grey and probably also the black. You just have to keep in mind what you're trying to achieve, knowing that you can always overstitch things. 
and here so I've got the black of the the bird's head that I put on before there's the base there's the frill that I put on for his wings I'm going to just try and incorporate all this into the same part I do slightly longer stitches don't necessarily want to stitch this down too much I quite like the texture of it but I am going to stitch into the top of these wings so that it makes it all look like a whole thing again I'm not necessarily wanting to stitch it all down I just want to start it all becoming one thing and again I'm going to stitch on and then off onto the base fabric eventually as in there I take it into the background and fasten that bit off. So I'm going to get some mid grey in my needle so it's not quite so stark as because uh, as you can see that is silver grey but it looks white on top of the black taffeta. So I'm going to go back into exactly the same places that I was before and I'm going to over stitch it all and just tone that down. So there will be little flecks of highlights coming through but it won't be quite as jarring as that grey looks now. I usually work in the direction of the feathers. I tend not to come back up on myself. But I'm just going to put some down here because I'd quite like that to be, quite like the stitching here to come down his tummy. I'm coming off onto the background fabric which will all help to hold it all down. Crisscrossing the stitches a little bit but always going in the direction of the feathers. Just put it down and have a look. Oh yes, that, that's definitely a better colour. Definitely. I'm actually going to work my way back up to the top just so that I can work down because I like to work with the flow of the feathers but don't want to waste my thread by tying off. So I'm just going to work my way back up this tummy up the breast and back up to where these very pale bits are that I don't like. So I'm going to do the into his beak. Small, I'll try and hold it for near up, small little stitches onto the beak. Because I knew that that yellow was a little bit too far on, but it, it's easier to put stitches onto it and have it coming from underneath. That's looking really nice now. And the stitches around the eye. And you see, as I put the mid grey over the top. You're just going to see little glints of the silver and that's actually going to that's actually going to look really nice. I'm going to split one or two of the silver stitches and maybe I'll just thin them down a bit. Just coming up right just underneath the eye actually, underneath that piece of felt. to the end of this bit of thread so I might change to black to do the next bit. I'm not trying to do thread painting in the way that the blue tit in my other book was but I do want it to look sort of realistic 
but I don't want it to be in the way of thread painting. This is definitely not that type of embroidery. This time I'm definitely going to work it along the beak because I want the feathers to look like they're coming right from where that beak area is. And the single strand of black should do that really well. So if I can get it on camera. Look at that, that's just lovely. Do another one there. Just into the surround. Just exactly, just exactly right. Sometimes you just have to go down to the fine thread and all of a sudden it makes such a difference. So to me, if I'd used two, two threads of black there, I wouldn't be getting such a good effect for his round his beak. I'll bring you in close so you can see it. So I'm going to carry on with this thread around his eye again. In fact, I might be able to, I don't know that I necessarily need to go through into the back all the time. I'm just going to do it that way. Yep. Because remember, I've got all the padding underneath. I don't need to keep going right the way through. I'm still following the lines I've already got now, so I can do it a bit upside down because I'm, I know I've got the, the other threads laid in in the right direction. So as long as I'm carrying on with that, I know I won't be making a mistake. I'm just going to lay some single black threads in among all this. And again, it'll tone down that silver. I'll just end up turning it all sorts of ways. It doesn't matter how I hold it, as long as the stitches go in the right direction, it doesn't matter which way around you're holding it. I hope you're all enjoying doing your own books of whatever theme you're making. I'm just going to take one or two of these stitches into the back fabric so that there is remember I only just um, hemmed the taffeta down so all of this is going to keep the taffeta down as well. In fact, I'll just take one or two a bit further away so it makes it look really feathery. Yeah, that's good. Boo ended up knocking the camera and so I've lost some of the the footage that I was in the midst of doing. I'm afraid my battery died just at an opportune moment. So I carried on with a bit more stitching and I think I have to leave it there for now. So I'm going to take you in for a closer look. You can see the bird beak and eye. They're looking quite nice now. I toned down the silver grey. I've added in the highlights along each of the folds of the wings. And I've also taken stitches down to the bottom of his tail. So what I need to do now is make these highlights a little bit lighter along here. A little bit of a highlight down his tail still and then lay in the feet so I think I'll leave that till the next time there's quite a bit of work being done on that today really so I shall leave it there for now I'll leave the bird as it is for now um, I've got two slightly different ideas for putting his legs in. One would definitely be just raised embroidery um, in the same way as I did the dandelion stem in the other book. Uh, a bit of yeah, raised stem stitch. But I was also thinking that it would be quite nice to wrap some wire 
and put his legs on properly in 3D. So I might just practice the wire ones and see if it's going to work very well. And if it is, then I'll do that next time. So I think one more session on the blackbird and he, his page probably will be finished. And in the meantime, um, send me a message, like if you like it, and please uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to carry on seeing more of these books coming together, both of them, the bird one and the flower one. And I'll see you next time. So bye bye from Marion's World and um, I'll see you later. Bye now.